Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. I am Tanubi Chandel, volunteer of Applied Forensic Research Sciences. Today we are going to discuss about forensic entomology. So the contents which we will be covering are Introduction to Forensic Entomology Basic Principle of Insect Biology Life Cycle of the Blowfly Life Cycle of the Flesh Fly Stages of Decomposition Fueled by Insect Activity Estimation of Time Since Death Collection and Preservation of Entomological Evidences and MCQs Now, let's move on to Introduction. The first question comes to our mind when we read this topic is what is forensic entomology? So, forensic entomology can be defined as the scientific study of the invasion of the succession pattern of insects with their developmental stages found on the decomposed corpse during legal investigation. It involves the application of the study of arthropods like arachnids, centipedes, millipedes and crustaceans to criminal cases. They are primarily associated with death investigations. However, it may also be used to detect drugs and poisons, determine the location of incident and find the presence and time of the infliction of wounds. We are going to see estimation of time since death later in this video. For a better understanding of forensic entomology, we need to learn about some basic principles of insect biology. Insects are the dominant life form on earth. About 1 million species have been described and there may be as many as 10 times that many yet to be identified. Millions may exist in a single acre of land. Of all creatures on earth, insects are the main consumers of plants and they also constitute a major food source for many other animals. Insects are extraordinarily adaptable creatures, having evolved to live successfully in most environments on earth, including deserts and the Antarctic. The only place where insects are not commonly found is the oceans. If they are not physically equipped to live in a stressful environment, insects have adopted behaviors to avoid such stresses. Insects possess an amazing diversity in size, form and behavior. It is believed that insects are so successful because of their exoskeleton, they are small and they can fly. Their small size and ability to fly permits escape from enemies and disposal to new environments. Because they are small, they require only small amounts of food and can exist in a very small space. In addition, insects can produce large numbers of offspring relatively quickly. Insect population also possess considerable genetic diversity and a great potential for adaption to different or changing environments. Insects are directly beneficial to humans by producing honey, silk, wax and other products indirectly they are important as pollinators of crops natural enemies of pests scavengers and food for other creatures at the same time insects are major pests of human and domesticated animals because they destroy crops and vector diseases in reality less than one percent of insect species are pests and only a few hundred of these are consistently a problem. The more we know about their biology and behavior, including their natural enemies, the more likely we will be able to manage the insects effectively. Let us understand about the life cycle of a blowfly. Though we use the term blowfly, there are many different species with different growth charts and development timelines. Though Adults are easy to tell apart, the maggots can look quite similar. Part of a forensic entomologist's job is identifying which species the maggot belongs to and knowing how temperature and environment 
affects that growth. On average, though, the life cycle of a blowfly goes through six stages. They are eggs laid. Eggs are laid by a mature female blowfly in a carcass holes or open wounds such as ears, nose, eyes, mouth and anus within minutes or hours of death. Eggs hatch. Eggs are 1 to 2 mm in length and hatch after 24 to 45 hours, then quickly grow to become first stage larva, otherwise known as maggots. First stage maggots. Maggots produce an enzyme that breaks down protein, so they feed on semi liquid bodily fluids as the body decomposes. At this stage, they grow and after several days shed their exoskeleton. Second stage maggots. In the second maggot stage, they grow in size and continue to feed off the decomposing body. This stage ends when they molt for a second time and become third stage maggots. Third stage maggots may also be called as pupae. In the third stage of maggots, now pupae, they fall to ground and no longer feed or move. Their exoskeleton hardens and turns from a light brown to a black color. Adult blowfly The adult blowfly emerges from the exoskeleton and can fly after only a few hours. A male blowfly is able to mate right away while a female must feed on protein such as a carcass or feces before being able to lay her own eggs and thus the cycle continues. Blowflies often take a part in breaking down decomposing bodies and returning the nutrients back to the earth. It's through their efforts that bodies decompose faster than they would otherwise. Because of the specific life cycle of the blowflies, the time of death can be determined with fair level of certainty. Also, let's talk about the life cycle of a flesh fly. Flesh fly typically pass through four distinct life stages. Egg, larva or nymph, pupa and adult. Eggs are laid singly or in masses in or on plant tissue or another insect. The embryo within the egg develops and eventually a larva or nymph emerges from the egg. There are generally several larval or nymphal stages, each progressively larger and requiring a mold or shed of the outer skin between each stage. Most weight gain occurs during the last one or two larval stages. In general, neither eggs, pupae nor adults grow in size. All growth occurs during the larval or nymphal stages. The nymphal stages resemble the adult except that they lack wings and the nymphs may be colored differently than the adults. Nymphs and adults usually occupy similar habitats and have similar hosts. Insects are cold-blooded so that the rate at which they develop is mostly dependent on the temperature of their environment. Cooler temperatures result in slower growth, higher temperature speed up the growth of the process. If a season is hot and humid, more generations may occur than during a cool season. Let's focus on the stages of decomposition fueled by the insect activity. There are five stages. Fresh, bloat, decay, post-decay, dry or skeletal. Let us now talk about the first stage that is fresh stage. It begins at the time of death when flesh flies, blow flies, predatory wasps attack the dead body. It is the first sign of bloating due to the putrefication by an aerobic bacteria. There is a process called autolysis, the degradation of complex protein and carbohydrate molecules which occurs in this stage. Let us talk about the second stage, 
that is the blood stage the body swells due to the gases produced by the bacteria and the temperature of the corpse rises flies are still present adult and larval blow flies are attracted in large number to seepage and soil fauna moves away due to the wetness of the earth ants and other species of flies prey on maggots third is the decay stage gases subside decomposition fluids sift from the body bacteria and maggots break through the skin predatory beetles such as rove and hista beetles are attracted there is an unpleasant odor larvae beginning to pupate corpse reduced to about 20% of its original mass fourth post decay carcass reduced to hair skin and bones in dry habitats remains consist of dry skin cartilage and bones it is a site for domestic beetles hysterids fly pupae immature and adult rove beetles in wet habitats large quantities of wet viscous material found in soil under the remains site for adult and immature moth flies rove beetles fifth stage that is the dry skeletal stage it does not always occur especially if the corpse is in a wet region maggots will stay longer and hide beetles will not appear the corpse is reduced to at least 10% of the original mass in the last stage only bone and hair remains some domestids fly pupae immature and adult rove beetles normal soil fauna consisting of mites etc start to return this stage could last for several months to years as i had earlier now we will be discussing estimation of time since death when a body is discovered more than 72 hours after death details normally examined are body temperature skin color and degree of muscle rigidity blow flies however lay eggs within minutes of someone dying and so investigators can use the growth timeline of blow fly maggots to find out exactly when a person died in some deaths establishing the time a person died is extremely important even the difference of a few hours can make a huge difference in convicting someone of a crime it's at this times a forensic entomologist is called in to take maggot samples from the body establish which type of blow fly it is and which stage the blow fly maggot is at in order to determine the time of death action and preservation of entomological evidences is very necessary for successful crime scene investigation it can be done by following several steps such as fixing camera and video tape at the crime scene net and sticky traps can be used to catch flies live specimen and killed creatures must be put in different jars the specimens must be collected with the help of forceps or spoon or small paint brushes crime scene must be sketched and recorded gloves and hand towels should be usually taken along to avoid contamination preservation is done by using 98% ethanol solution so the mcq question is what method of forensic entomology is used to determine time since death when the corpse has been dead from 1 month to a year or more option a accumulated degree hour technique option b maggot age and development option c successional waves of insects option d questioned epistemological examination do share your answers in the comment section and the correct answer will be uploaded in the upcoming video in the previous video topic introduction to question document part 1 the mcq question was who is the father of question documents option a alphonse bertillon option b francis galton 
ऑप्शन सी एल्बर्ट एस ऑसबॉर्न ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ द अबाव एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी एल्बर्ट एस ऑसबॉर्न